at least in our company, the way that we are doing piping, structural, pressure vessels, all of these things, but everybody in the company should know the lingo of each other. Mm. You should be able to talk. We don't have that those walls set up. Of course, that might be difficult in a very big organization. But being aware of it, I don't know exactly how they could do it in a bigger organization. Maybe have people who know both sides. Just as an example, when I started doing pipe stress, subsea pipe stress, I got the loads from the pipelines that was connecting to the equipment that was on the seafloor. I like nozzle loads. Yeah, so like nozzle loads, connect tie-in loads we call them. So they're huge. And you put that and we use beta 1.8 in those cases. And we run it pipe stress analysis and we check the stresses and whatnot. And then I was presenting, uh, and I was very young at the time, I was presenting my results in front of a big group of people. Suddenly one guy standing up, okay, what, what load factor do you use? And I was, I just froze, it's like, I don't know, should I use load factor? I use 1.0. And he got so angry uh, that I didn't use load factors. Everybody knows that you have to use load factors, but no, you don't have to do that in piping. You have to do it in structural. So there's where you see, and suddenly he instructed me to go back, put on a load factor of at least 1.3, preferably 1.5. So you mean like increasing the loads further rather than increasing the stresses further? Yeah, yeah so, so because what I realized after a few days, because I started looking into this, that there's two approaches. We use the allowable stress design approach. So you have an allowable stress. If you are within that allowable stress, based on that and that condition, you're safe. That's kind of the essence of it. Yeah.